hi everyone and welcome to uh, today's message. Special uh, a word all the way from Albania. Uh, I'm really glad that you could join us. Um, you know, I really just uh, felt while we were here the past couple of days that uh, it would really be good for, for me just to, to, to share a word to start off the year. Since we don't have services specifically in Selimbosh, um, you know, why not use technology and broadcast uh, uh, what, what I've just been feeling on my heart uh, uh, to you where you are. So um, you know, for those of you who don't know, my wife Marna and myself and the boys, William and Elliot, have been in um, Europe since just before Christmas. And we're visiting Carl and Alicia at Grace Life Du Res in Albania, which is in southeastern Europe. And uh, I'm recording this and broadcasting it from um, Grace Life Du Res offices and the church uh, uh, here. And as you can see behind me, there's some empty chairs there waiting for the service, which is going to start uh, uh, today on Sunday. And um, yeah, it's really, they've done a really good job at setting up here. And uh, everything is done with such excellence, and it's really good. Um, today will be our first service uh, while we've been here. We haven't done ministry um, into the church yet or anything like that. We've, we just decided to spend the first couple of days, uh, or actually two weeks, uh, first of all resting, especially uh, allowing some time of rest for Carl and Alicia. They've been here for almost a year. And um, just allowing for us to then spend some time praying together and just getting God's heart for not only this month of, of ministry trip, but for the whole, um, you know, for the year ahead for, for the ministry and for duress specifically. You know, Grace Life Duress is really big on my heart because um, there's just so much potential here. If, you know, walking around the streets and, and, and uh, engaging with people in coffee shops and whatnot, um, there's a real need for the gospel here. There isn't any framework for, for, for church or people don't understand what it's about. Uh, even people who have come to Grace Life, we've had to educate them on um, you know, how to do church and what, why do we do church and what is church and all of that type of stuff. Um, and you know, as I, I, I was thinking even at the end of last year about what do I expect from this trip here in Albania, um, you know, the first thing which really just jumped out for me, uh, uh, um, <laughs> jumped out to me, was um, that uh, I would love to just see many people saved, many people healed. We would love to see many miracles while we're here, um, and the church really, at minimum, double in size. Um, and that's awesome. But you know, while I was meditating on that, and that's what we we're aiming for. But while we were meditating on that, I just realized that. Uh, at the end of the day, if all we do is strengthen the, the 20 to however many believers that there are here in the church, if that's all we do, if all we do is come to Albania and uh, in this next month that uh, we're here, strengthen the church, invest into the church, teach them, ground them, all of that, that's impacting eternity and it's worth every rand spent. It's worth the energy and the effort. Yeah, Martin and I, with the boys, it's a, it's, a, it's a big deal to be here. And, uh, you know, it's, it's out of our comfort zone. It's out of our environment, the boys too. And so it's not easy, but we know that it's an investment. And it's awesome to be here. We're enjoying it. Everybody's well. But, but we know that even if we're investing into the people that are here, it's going to be seed grown and it's going to impact generations to come. You know, before we've even had a service and started ministering to the people here, uh, we've already seen some miracles, some healings, and we've already seen some uh, one, he uh, one salvation, which is really exciting. And we're very expectant about what lies ahead. So thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your financial support. Uh, it's really, I'm, I'm expecting, I'm looking forward to what's going to be happening over the next while. Sundays are going to be our main days for, for ministry and for um, investing into the church. And then we're going to just take it as we come and, and maybe do a few extra things in the week. Um, but we're going to see how this Sunday goes first. The reason why we haven't planned specific things is because it snowed yesterday and uh, everything's icy and it's freezing cold, which I like the cold weather, but it's still freezing got a heater standing right in front of me as I'm ministering now. And, um, you know, we just need to, the people don't like to come out when it's cold. So we, we, we're going to try and figure out how to overcome that hurdle. But anyway, the purpose of us gathering together today is, is for me just to minister to you something that I felt on my heart um, regarding the new year specifically 
and how you can make your, your this year ahead something uh, 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 great. You know, as I've been looking through social media just before New Year's and just after New Year's, around New Year's, I was really surprised at how many Christians were negative about their experience in 2016. Um, you know, I'd expect that from unbelievers, but, but for believers to be griping and complaining about this was the worst year ever and all of that, you know, it's, it's really pitiful um, considering that we've got Jesus. You know, we should have a better testimony than that. And there's no condemnation for you if you had a bad year. There's no condemnation for you if you posted about how bad the year was. But that shouldn't be our testimony. Our testimony should be that in spite of circumstances, we are more than conquerors through Christ who gives us strength. Our testimony should be positive and uplifting, bringing glory to God. And it shouldn't be one where, you know, this last year was terrible. Let's hope the next year is great. And, you know, year after year, that is something which I, I've seen time and time again. You know, the, 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 the past year was just terrible. And uh, hopefully this one will be better. And you know what? For, for a lot of those people, it, it never is any better than the previous year. And um, you know, the reason for that is probably because they don't choose to make any uh, significant adjustments. They don't make decisions which will make adjustments in uh, the, the, the necessary adjustments to ensure that they go in a better direction. And, uh, you know, if we want any form of change in our lives, we've got to make decisions to go in the right direction. Otherwise, we never, it's never going to happen. You know, many people hope for the change um, without making the decisions that are necessary for the change. And, and that's just like, you know, trying to row a boat with a, um, a toothpick. It's, it's not going to happen. Over the next, uh, 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 during this message this morning, I really want to share with you a couple, and this evening, a couple um, uh, keys for you to, to be able to make adjustments necessary to move forward and enjoy this year and experience uh, just, just great things. Now, God, it's not just about this year, but the things which we're going to talk about, if you apply them to your life, they will make your life even better than it already is. But remember, you know, a good year and a good life isn't going to happen by accident. It doesn't happen by accident. Uh, it, doesn't it doesn't happen by you continuing in the same direction you've always gone. If you want something different, some, some different results, you're going to have to do something different. Okay? So I want to start off just by challenging you that with the things that we're going to share, don't kind of just say, oh, I know that, that's a good word, it's for someone else. Take it as a word for you from God, because God you know, had it that you're sitting where you're sitting, watching this video, and I'm sitting where I'm sitting, sharing this with you. you know, I'm sharing this with you, and I believe that God wants you to hear something. And so, you write down, as we're, as we're going through this, write down uh, 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 points that stick out for you, things that the Lord might even reveal to you about what you need to do, adjust, to be able to move forward in His purposes for you. you know, Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says that God knows the plans He has for us, and they have plans for a prosperous future filled with hope. Okay, That prosperous future filled with hope doesn't happen by accident. It comes because we receive it, because we trust God, but we receive it from Him. It's a free gift, but we need to make decisions to, to uh, get there, to, to enjoy it. That is, and it's somewhere in the future, according to that verse. That prosperous future filled with hope is in the future, and what we need to do is get that into our present. God doesn't want us just living with a, you know, the future is bright, but my today is dark. He wants us to be able to in, live in a present tense reality of His goodness. He wants us to live in uh, uh, that future full of hope now. Okay, but you know, as we were praying, you know, just as uh, leaders here, Marna, myself, Carl, and Alicia, um, I really just felt God put three major keys on my heart, which three, basically three things which are roadblocks uh, to experiencing a good life and experiencing uh, uh, um, success. Okay, and specifically now this is for your year as well. So three major things, you know, which are roadblocks for a great year. And, and if you were to think about this year, I'm wanting to accomplish such and such and such and such and this and that, the next thing. If you think about all the things that you're wanting to accomplish this year, these three things will prevent you from accomplishing it. Okay, if you don't, ha if you don't deal with these three things, it's going to prevent you from, from moving forward. Okay, and they are a lack of vision, a lack of faith, 
And um, let me just look at my last one here. Uh, insufficient ability or resources. So a lack of vision, a lack of faith, and insufficient resources or ability. Those three things will prevent you from, from moving forward into the present filled with hope. Not just your future filled with hope, but enjoying what God wants for you now. And uh, so we're going to look at that. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to get into uh, the message. So Father, I just want to thank you that you know, as we dig into this message uh, today, that it's going to be something which ministers to our hearts, ministers to our lives, and enables us to be able to be positioned to be able to receive all that you've got for us this year. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And let me just start off there by saying that God has great plans for you this year. He's, he, he's got so much in store for you, and He wants the best for you. Okay, But it doesn't happen automatically. You've got to go for it. You've got to grab hold of it. Okay, um, Just two verses in, 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 uh, by means of introduction. Mark, well actually I'm in Luke already. Um, but you know, uh, let's look at Luke 11 first. It says in verse 9, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. And <clears throat> what I want you to see is that you have not because you ask not, as James says. If, if you need, ask. If you, if, if you need uh, uh, to find something, if you're needing advice, if you're needing direction, you need to seek for it. You're not going to find it unless you seek for it. It's not going to drop on your lap while you're watching TV. It's not going to, you know, it, 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 it comes as a result of purposefully seeking God. You know, miracles are something which we think just happen, you know, here and there and everywhere by chance or when God wants it to happen. But in every miracle that ever happened, if you look at it, it happened because someone was trusting God. Someone was receive, wanting to receive from God. Someone was seeking God. If you want the things that God's got for you this year, you've got to seek Him. Jer uh, Jeremiah 29 verse 11 speaks about the, the future filled with hope that He's got for us. Verse 13 says, Yet you will find me when you seek for me with all your heart. You're not going to find God, His purposes for your life, and the answers that you have to questions unless you seek with everything you've got. And so I want to challenge you right in the beginning, before we get into this, to, to, to make your New Year's resolution to seek God first in everything. You know, Matthew 6.33 says, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You need to seek first the kingdom of God, which is His way of doing things. His way of doing things is in, our, in the Word, but it's also relationship with Him. And so seek first relationship with God. Seek first doing things His way. And His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. You know, I'm, I can go into a lot of depth on this verse, but let me just say this. Seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness is speaking about prioritizing what God prioritizes. Having His priorities as our priorities. You know, how do I know, or how do you know what your priorities are? Well, look at how you spend your time and your money. Those are two of, uh, of the, the, the biggest things, uh, resources which you have. And you will give time and money towards what you value and what's a priority for you. And so, you know, if we truly value relationship with God and the kingdom, we're going to be investing time and money into it. You know, uh, 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 so, you know, that's just for free. Let me leave that there and say, so we need to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. His righteousness is talking about, it's His righteousness. We're not seeking our own right standing with God, but we're seeking His right standing that He gives us as a gift. And so we need to receive the gift of righteousness when we get born again. We, when we get born again, we do receive the gift of righteousness. And we become right with God. And that's what we need to rely on. Seeking first His righteousness means I'm trusting in the fact that He's made me right. And I deserve the blessing because He's given it to me. He's made me. He's qualified me. He's made me deserving. Okay, so... Seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness is talking about prioritizing what God prioritizes and then uh, 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 just settling the fact in my heart that I deserve the blessing, I deserve His fl uh, flavor, that I deserve His favor and I can enjoy the benefits of relationship with God because Jesus has made me deserving even though I was undeserving. 
Now I'm deserving because I'm his child. The inheritance I have in Christ isn't mine because of holiness, isn't mine because of obedience to some uh, set of rules. The, the inheritance I have in Christ is mine because I'm a child of God and he's made me right, righteous. 2 Corinthians 5.21 He who knew no sin became sin for us so that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He became what I was, which is sinful, so that I could become what He is, which is righteous. And so righteousness means that I'm deserving, I qualify for the blessing, I'm deserving of the blessing, which means I'm deserving and I qualify for success, not because of my hard work, but because God is with me. And so if you want your, your year to be successful, it starts with trusting God more. And you trust God more by, by focusing more on Him, by prioritizing relationship with Him more, giving more time and attention to Him. Don't get sucked up into life this year. Don't get uh, sidetracked by the busyness of work and family and this and that. I challenge you, seek first, prioritize relationship with God. It will make all the difference in your life this year. Don't wait until you're, 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 you're flat on your back or you're, you're in a corner and you, 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 you just need Jesus. <laughs> we always need Jesus, even when things are going well. So I want to challenge you. Seek Him even in times of peace. Seek Him when things are going well. Seek Him and, and, and enjoy friendship and relationship with Him every day of this year. Make it a priority. You know, it's not a legalistic thing to read your Bible every day. It's, it's a good thing. When you go a day without reading your Bible and spending time with the Lord, you shouldn't feel condemned. There's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. You shouldn't feel condemned. You should feel hungry. Because spending time with the Lord in the Word and in prayer is, is like food for us. It, it gives us our sustenance and our energy to be able to move forward. <clears throat> so anyway, yeah, whatever goals you've got this year, whatever things you're wanting to accomplish, whatever God's got for you this year, there's three things that are roadblocks to a great year. The first one I'm going to talk about is a lack of vision. And in Proverbs 29 verse 18 says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keeps the law is happy. Okay, so we're talking about vision. You need vision. Vision, what is vision? Vision is knowing that there is more, and it's knowing what the more is, to what you are currently seeing and experiencing. So vision is being able to see beyond where you are now. It's being able to see beyond where your business is now. Being able to see beyond where your family is now, where your finances are now, where your health is now. You need to have a vision for where you, where you go, uh, what God's got for you, what He wants for you, for your life. Okay? Vision is seeing where we should be going. In what direction we should be going. Even if you don't know how to get there. Vision is, this is where we need to go. Okay, so you need a vision for your life. You might have a vision for your life. You might think, this is what I want to accomplish. You might say, I've got a vision for my business. This is what I want to accomplish with my vision. You know your vision statement, whatever the case is. But I want to challenge you. That's not good enough. And I'm going to come back to that in a moment. First, well, let me, let me say it like this. Let me answer it before I move on in case I forget. <laughs> It's not good enough to have a vision for your life and it's not good enough to, to, to have a vision for your business or your family or whatever, even for your finances. You need to have God's vision for your life. You need to have God's vision for your family, for your finances, for your business. It's the same thing with the ministry. We've got to have God's vision for, for what He wants to accomplish in and through us. Okay? Elib Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay, that's the King James Version. And it's saying that faith is the substance of things hoped for. Okay? It's the evidence of things not seen. It's not saying that faith is... is it, 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 it's not saying that there are things that don't exist. It's saying that there are things that don't are unseen. So your future, even though it's unseen, it doesn't ex it's not like it doesn't exist. So what you're doing is vision is being able to see where you should be going so that you can go there. You don't, you know, you, you don't know how to get to, um, if you don't know, let me, let me even just stop there, I, 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 move on. Amplified. 
version of Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hopeful. Now, that's the King James. Sorry. Now faith is the assurance, the title, deed, or confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. So, faith is seeing things the way that God sees them. Faith is having His vision. Okay? Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced in the physical senses. And I'll even add yet. Okay? Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Not things that don't exist, but things unseen. Faith and vision are very closely linked. You cannot have vision without faith, and you cannot have faith without vision. Okay, and you know, how does faith come? It comes by hearing and hearing by the word. We're going to talk about that in a moment. So it just shows you that if you want to have the right vision, you need to be in the word. Okay, but you know, faith, as I said, sees things the way God sees them. If you want to have a successful year and a successful life, you need to start seeing things the way God sees them. You need to see your future as God sees it. You need to see yourself, your identity as God sees you. Do you have the right vision for, of yourself, of your business, of your life? Do you know what God wants to accomplish with your life? Do you know what God wants to accomplish with your business? Do you know what God wants to accomplish in your family, in your finances? If you don't, you will perish in that area. If you do know, it's the first step towards fruitfulness and success. Yeah. How do we get this vision? You know, that, I think that's important. Well, firstly, you, you get it through the Word. Spending time on the Word. As I said, faith and, and vision are closely linked. So uh, We'll get to it just now, but uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word. And so the more time you spend with God, the more you're going to have that vision. It comes through Word and it comes through prayer. Prayer is basically just talking to God. So the more you relate to God, the more you have fellowship with Him, the more you're going to have um, His vision for your life. The more you're going to see what needs to be seen. Okay. Now, let's just look up on a, a verse with this, and it's Psalm 37, verse 4. Um, Psalm 37, verse 4. My fingers are so cold that I'm struggling to turn the pages. <laughs> um, but I love the cold weather, so I'm not complaining. Uh, Psalm 37 verse 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Okay, so now this, in, in, in terms of vision, this is what I'm, I'm wanting to talk about with this. In terms of vision, delight yourself in the Lord and He'll give you the desires of your heart. Remember, it's not talking about um, uh, I desire a Ferrari, He's going to give me a Ferrari. It's talking about uh, uh, desiring, He'll give you desires to desire. Okay, so... Um, delight in the Hebrew means pliable. I think the, the, the Hebrew word is agag or something like that. But the, 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 the word means pliable, which means as we delight, as we make our hearts pliable, moldable, shapeable in the Lord's hand, influenceable in God's hands, He gives us desires to desire. He gives us His desires. If, if we look at it then in terms of vision, as we delight, make ourselves pliable in God's hands, He gives us desires to desire. He gives us a vision to dream. So we need to allow His dream to be birthed within us. We need to allow His vision to come within us, which is a dream of what should be, a dream of where we should be going. And as we do that, it'll, 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 we'll bring birth to His vision for our lives, for our business, for what He wants to accomplish. I want to challenge you. Your vision for your life is too small. Your vision for your business is too small. Start to seek God and allow Him to change your heart and you'll start to see much more than what you're seeing now. If the vision which God has, a, 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 the vision which you have doesn't scare you, it doesn't wake you up at night and cause you to panic about how we're going to accomplish this, it's too small. You know, it, let me just talk about Grace Life Vision for a moment. You know, part of our vision is we want to plant churches where churches are needed around the world. And you know, most people who hear that vision 
look at us and see, hey, but you're not the biggest church around. You don't have as much finances as you should need for something like that. And, you know, if I get into the natural and start to think about that, I start to think, well, we can't really accomplish everything we need to accomplish uh, the way we are now. How are we going to do this? God, we're not big enough for this. You know, and, and, and it's not just talking about money and people support and stuff. If you just think about it, how on earth you know, can a, a church of our size send its lead pastor away for a whole month to go and do church planting and, 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 and minister in other churches? Well, the only way it can happen is firstly if it's from God and secondly if uh, uh, there's a strong leadership team, which we have back home, and they can keep things going. And so if you look at it, uh, 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 this vision is pretty scary. You know, every time I, I, have to, I, I start thinking, uh, uh, God puts on my heart to travel somewhere and uh, start preparing for it, I always think, flip, <laughs> it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, you know. And, you know, then God always challenges me and says, it's not a lot of money for Him. Yeah, and uh, I was just so blessed how the finances came in so quickly for this trip. You know, it just shows you, we limit God by our small vision, our small thinking. When we start to see what He sees, nothing will hold us back from doing what He's called us to do. I hope that that encourages you. You know, look, look with me at um, Romans. Let's look at Romans chapter, uh, where are we? Romans chapter 12. Once again, my fingers are cold. <laughs> so I'm trying to get the pages here. Here we go. Romans chapter 12, verse... Uh, one, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And do not and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So what I want, to, want you to see here is that in, in, in getting God's vision for your life, you need to be a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice means that you're, um, uh, what's the word, voluntarily laying down yourself, your life, you know, to, as a sacrifice, meaning uh, uh, an offering unto God. You're saying, okay, God, I'm yours. I want your, what you want for me. I don't want what I want for me. I want what you want for me. Very few Christians do that. We want what we want for ourselves, and we want God to bless it. But I want to challenge you. God's will for your life is better than your will for your life. And the more you, 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 you accept His will for your life, the more satisfied, happy, and uh, full of joy you're going to be. Guaranteed. You know, as a, a Carl and myself were walking from the house to, or the flat to um, the, the church offices here in Duress, um, I, I was just asking him you know, how, how it's been uh, uh, um, what does he miss from home and things like that? And he said, you know, uh, the first three months were difficult, but he just realized, like, if, if God calls you to something, you're going to start to want it and you're going to start to enjoy it. And, it, it, you know, God will kind of put it in your heart that it'll be a desire of yours, just like we spoke about now. And you know, he, 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 he shared with me how he's come to love this place and the people and love what they're doing. And that's awesome. You know, that's how it should be. So there's a lot more we can say about that verse. But basically, if you offer yourself as a living sacrifice, you start to think like God thinks, you'll start to see like God sees, and uh, things will start to change and move forward in that direction for you. So how do we get that vision? It's through relationship with God. It's through the Word. It's through prayer. It's through yielding yourself to God and His will and allowing Him to change your heart and give you desires to desire. So turn with me to Philippians chapter 3. And let's look at a, a passage there, Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. I've been writing about some of this stuff in uh, the devotionals uh, over the past week. And I want to encourage you to go on our website and sign up at the bottom there, or go onto my blog and uh, read through the devotionals there. Um, you know, we've, I, I've been talking about a few things there, and, and in this message there's a whole bunch more, and in the devotionals there's some different stuff as well. So it will really help you just to be able to plan your year, get your focus right to be able to move forward. But Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, Paul writes and he says, Brethren, I count my, not myself, my, sorry, I count myself, I, <laughs> I count not myself as to have already um, apprehended. But this one thing I do, 
forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto the things which before. I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And so, you know, this is a real big key for you to move forward into all that God's got for you for this year. Firstly, I count myself not to have apprehended. I want to encourage you to humble yourself and not think that you've arrived. Don't think that you know everything there is to know about everything. Don't think that you, 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 because of what you've accomplished and because of your studies or whatever the case is, you've made it and you're fine. There's always more. Even if everything in your life is good, there's more. If everything in your life is bad, there's definitely more. <laughs> but, you know, there's always more for us to, to um, experience and accomplish. And so we should never just camp and think, oh, I've made it. I'm always learning. I'm always growing. I'm always allowing God to use other people and books and resources to, to grow me as a pastor and as a leader and as a teacher so that I can be better at what I'm doing and be more effective and reach more people. It should be the same with you in your sphere of influence. And even in your life. You know, we're not just talking about accomplishing things for money or for uh, uh, calling and things like that. You're also called to be a husband or a wife if you're married. You know, uh, you're called to be a disciple. You're called to, to be a, a friend. You're called to be um, whatever, a, a, an influencer. On every area of your life, you can be better. And I want to encourage you to invite people to speak into your life, to be able to sharpen your skills, to be able to help you be more effective in doing what God's called you to do and being who God's called you to be. Now, I just, just feel on my heart right now, just a word for, for someone who's watching. You've been focusing too much on doing business, on doing work, on trying to accomplish something. You, you, you kind of um, excuse it by saying that you, uh, you're doing it for your family. But I really just feel God saying, you need to make sure that, what, that your motivation is right because you're not doing it for your family as much as you're, you're doing it for yourself. You're doing it for the wrong reasons. It's not wrong to accomplish something, but you need to realize that you cannot neglect your family in trying to accomplish something. Your significance and your worth isn't found in what you accomplish and what you do. It's found in Christ, and you cannot drop the glass balls. You've got, remember, you're juggling glass balls and rubber balls. You can let the rubber balls bounce. That's your business. That's your career. But you cannot drop glass balls of health, of relationships, of family, of your marriage. Make sure that you prioritize those things because those are important to God. Your relationship with your spouse is more important than your business. And God would have it that you do not neglect your spouse, but you give them the, 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 the attention and the care and the love that is rightfully theirs. So I want to challenge you that if, if, you, if that's speaking to you, you can, you, you know, if whatever need you may have, you can, you can on the um, church online program, just, just ask for prayer. But I want to challenge you. Ask for prayer, and we'll be glad to pray with you about your situation. But, but beyond that, make it a priority that, hey, I'm going to put my family first this year. I'm going to prioritize them and make sure that they feel valued, loved, and cared for. Providing for them financially is not the only way that you care for them. Giving them time and attention and, uh, you know, FaceTime, as my wife calls it. You know, looking at them at the, in, in their face, not on your app, Apple iFace phone thing. Give them time and attention that's due to them. Anyway, so let's look at this in, in, in Philippians chapter 3 again. It says, I count not myself to have, have apprehended, but this one thing I do, this one thing I do, not these ten things I do, this one thing I do, this one thing is talking about focus. Okay, vision, you, God's vision for your life will bring everything into focus, will bring everything into focusing on a specific thing, going in a specific direction. He doesn't want you to go off in 10 million directions. He wants you to go in one direction, and that might mean you're doing a few things, like a few different things. You know, uh, I don't just prepare messages and preach. I also counsel with people. I disciple people. I lead our staff. Uh, I write. I, um, you know, I'm uploading this message today because I'm in a foreign country and, and uh, our team is still uh, on leave. Uh, you know, so, so there's, you're never just going to do one, uh, uh, one thing only, but it should be all one aim, one outcome. 
you know, uh, 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 anyone. Anyone. So this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. You've got to forget the past. Now, there's, I, I've just written some um, devotionals on this, and I encourage you to go and look at them. But forget the past. Forget the failures. Forget the, your, your, your sin. Forget the, the hurts. Forget the negative experiences and move on. Because that's holding you in bondage. That's holding you captive. Forget those things which lie behind. Don't just forget the bad things, but forget the good things too. Remember them. Don't forget them and ignore them. Build upon them, but forget the good. You know, a lot of the time we accomplish something, we achieve something. And you know, a year, two years, ten years down the line, we're still holding on to that. Like, hey, remember when I won that, or when I got that, or when I... You've got to build on that and move forward. It's like those, the, the, the people, we've had them in Grace Life in the past, and you know, in every church I've been in, there's always a group of older people who experienced some kind of revival in the past, some kind of move of God, and they talk about it all the time, and they're always trying to get that to happen again. But it has to be like it was back then. Like, this is how they did the worship, and that's why the, God, the move of God happened. Or this is what they taught. Or this is this. And it's like, you know, forget that stuff and move on. God wants to do something new. Okay? So, you know, that's, that's really important for you to realize. And it says, reaching forth to those things which are before. You need to know what's before. That's talking about having that vision of what God's got for you. Looking forward and moving in that direction. It says, I press towards the mark. Moving forward towards what uh, the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So there's a lot of things in there, and I want to encourage you to go and meditate on Philippians 3:13 and 14. Even get God's vision for your life and start moving forward in that direction. So the three barriers or roadblocks to having a great year and accomplishing what God's got for you was firstly what we've just spoken about: a lack of vision. But it's not just a lack of vision, it's a lack of God's vision. You need to have God's vision for your life. The second thing is neglecting your faith. And I didn't say a lack of faith, because as a believer, you've got faith. Okay? But you need to, you need to have, be operating in faith to accomplish what God's got for you. You cannot accomplish the vision that God's got for your life without faith. It takes faith to have a vision from God, but it takes faith to fulfill that vision from God. You know, as believers, we are the just, the justified. And uh, as scripture says, the just shall live by faith, or the righteous shall live by faith. Okay, Romans uh, 1.17, uh, the ESV says, for in, the righteousness of, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just or the righteous shall live by faith. So we live by faith. We don't just visit there from time to time. We live by faith. Okay? So we need to live by faith. Galatians 3 verse 11 and Hebrews 10 38 both say the th same thing. The righteous live by faith. Okay? Let's look at Matthew chapter 17 verse 20. Matthew 17 verse 20 says, let me just take some water. 1720 says, Jesus said, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, and a mustard seed, if you have never seen a mustard seed, Google it, that's not going to do you any good. Go to the local shop and look for mustard seeds and look at them. They are tiny. They are very, very small. I used to keep mustard seeds on this page in my Bible. I must actually get someone and do that. If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, Remove hence to yonder, go from here to there, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible for you. That's powerful. Nothing shall be impossible for you if you use a grain, a, 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 the amount of faith as small as a mustard seed. That's very little. It's not about how much faith you have. It's about using the faith that you've got. Okay, Romans 10 verse 17 I want to look there. Romans 10, verse 17 says, So faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, and other translations by hearing of the word of Christ or hearing of the gospel. And context is talking about the good news of Jesus and what he's done for us. And so 
You know, faith comes by hearing. As you read through the word and you see what, who God is, you see what he's done, you see what others have done, and you see what you can do, you see who you are in Christ, it builds faith. And faith strengthens in you to be able to operate in faith. But what this verse is really saying is that when you hear the gospel for the first time and you receive the gospel, faith comes by hearing. Then, at that moment, faith came. And faith never left. You're still God faith. Okay? So now, as we hear the word, as we hear the gospel, as we focus on Jesus, our faith is strengthened. And now all we need to do to actually get the faith effective is to use it. Because, like James says, faith without works is dead. So you stri- you, you re- you've got faith, now use your faith and strengthen it by hearing the gospel and stepping out and doing what you know you should do. Okay, look at Romans chapter 12, verse 3 with me. <coughs> Excuse me. It says, For I say, through the grace that is given unto me, that every man that is am- uh, 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 to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as according as God has dealt to him, To every man, the measure of faith. Some translations say a measure of faith. That's wrong. The word says that God has given you the measure of faith, which means that you've got the same amount of faith as everybody else has. Just some people are using their faith and some people aren't. If you're not seeing uh, uh, fruitfulness or results in your life, then it's one of the reasons is because you're not using your faith. You're not activating your faith. You know, why is it so important if you're wanting to fulfill what God's got for you this year that you don't neglect your faith and you operate in faith? Well, because uh, 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 faith is the way that you overcome obstacles. Faith is the way that you fulfill your purpose. We live by faith. Okay? If we're not living, we're dying. And so if we're not operating in faith... We're actually going backwards. We're dying. We're perishing. Okay? So, <coughs> excuse me. If we look at Mark 11, for time's sake, I'm not going to turn there now, but Jesus is speaking. He says, have faith in God. I say unto you, if you have, he says, uh, if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and you do not doubt in your heart, but you believe that those things which you say shall come to pass, you shall have them. That's basically... Jesus is teaching us how to deal with obstacles, how to deal with things, and how to release our faith. And we release our faith through words. Okay? So, you know, faith, uh, uh, if you look at the first two roadblocks to experiencing all that God's got for you this year, the first one is a lack of vision. Lack of vision is easily answerable. Spend time with God, spend time on the Word, and get His vision for your life, for your business, and for this year. The second one is faith. Easy one. You don't lack faith, and so you don't have a faith problem. You might not be using the faith that you you have, and that's the problem. So get into the Word and allow the the faith to be stirred up within you. Focus on Jesus. Focus on what He's done for you. Faith will rise up in your heart, and then as you feel that unction and that, that prompting to step out, step out, because faith without works is dead, and as you step out, faith will become active, and you will see the fruit of, of what you're needing to see. But the third thing, and the last thing, uh, uh, which is a roadblock or a hindrance to fulfilling what God's got for you this year, is insufficient ability or resources. And this is something, you know, um, if you ask anyone, what do you want to accomplish? And they list everything they want to accomplish. And then you ask them, what is preventing you from accomplishing this? Number one thing that most people will, 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 will put down is money, finances. Then they'll mention, maybe I don't have the ability, I need some training. Okay? And this is what I'm talking about. This is what I want to address. You know, insufficient ability or resources is a hindrance and a roadblock. But what's more of a roadblock and more of a hindrance is the fact that you don't believe that you've got what you have, what you need. You don't believe that you, you, you've got everything that you need to accomplish all that you need to accomplish. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says that He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. If you don't believe that, then tear that page out your Bible because that's what it says. You've been blessed with every spiritual blessing. You lack nothing. If you lack nothing, how can you say that you need something? 
You know, uh, 2 Peter 1, 3 says, Grace and peace be multi... Oh, this is verse 2. Uh, verse 3 says, According as His divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him. So you've been given all things that pertain, everything you need for life and for godliness. You've got it. So you do not lack anything to accomplish what you need to accomplish this year. You might lack vision, but that's easily answered by spending time with the Lord. You might lack um, uh, 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 activate, active faith. And that happens by you getting, uh, starting to see things as God sees them, being in the Word, and stirring it up and stepping out. But you've, you've got the resources that you need to accomplish. You might not have them physically. You might not have the money in the bank. You might not have that building. You might not have that car. You might not have the staff that you need. But what it's saying is that in the spiritual realm, God has already provided everything you could need for anything that you need to accomplish. The, now you need to move it from the spiritual realm into the physical realm. Okay, and how do we do that? Faith. All of these three things are linked as well. Okay, so you've got all that you need to accomplish all that you need to accomplish. Acts 1.8 says... Um, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on upon you, and you'll be witnesses unto Jesus, unto Him, in both in Judea, Samaria, uh, uh, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. And what that's saying is that when we're baptized in the Holy Spirit, we receive in a supernatural empowering to do supernatural things. We, we're empowered to live a supernatural life. You, you do not lack ability. You, it's just you don't believe in that ability. You probably don't believe in that ability because you don't, you, you're not in the Word, but you're also not stepping out to use that ability. Okay? And you know, this isn't just talking about laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover and doing miracles, signs, and wonders. It definitely is talking about that. But it's talking about being able to make the most of a, 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 a few resources to accomplish something supernaturally big like we're doing in Grace Life. It's talking about you know, being able to, you, you have the, 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 the know-how supernaturally. You don't know how to do something. You pray in the Spirit, and God gives you a supernatural know-how of how to accomplish something. We do not lack ability. You know, um, John chapter 14 verse 12 says, uh, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me, the works that I do, he shall also do, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Jesus is saying, we can do what he did, and even better, even greater. That's powerful. Why don't we do that? Because we don't believe we can do that. Okay? You know, it says here, he that believes on me. Not he that's been to seminary, or he that's been to Bible school, he that's um, well gifted in every area and trained. It's saying he that believes faith is more important than, than um, uh, 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 natural abilities and qualifications. Faith is much more important. You know, I, I, I've seen people who are able to manage finances and they don't have faith. I don't want to work with people like that because they aren't able to accomplish what God wants to accomplish. But if you don't know how to manage finances all that well, but you've got faith, you can do it better than someone who's got the natural ability. And if you're thinking that's crazy and that's wrong, then that's why it won't work for you. <laughs> we need to trust in the supernatural ability of God in us to be able to work in us and through us to do what He wants us to do. In your business place, you should come up with the best examples, the best uh, uh, ideas, the most innovative ideas, the most uh, uh, economical ideas and efficient ideas to be able to do things better and do things which will transform society. You should be the best in your field because you've got supernatural ability inside of you to be able to do what you're called to do. That's exciting. I hope that this is stirring you up. Then uh, 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 just a, a last thing on insufficient uh, ability and resources that as I was just preparing I felt this, this strongly on my heart you know one of the reasons why we sometimes seem to not have the ability or the resources 
to be able to do what we're called to do is because we're trying to do it by ourselves. You are not called to accomplish your vision for your life by yourself. Okay? Think about it. <laughs> Firstly, it's not your vision. It's God's vision for your life. And you need to realize that it's not your vision, it's God's vision. Secondly, you need to realize that we're, you know, we're part of one another. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 speaks about the church being the body of Christ and how we're part of one another. We are part of one another, the body of Christ, which means we need one another. The hand cannot say to the foot, I have no need of you. The eye cannot say to the nose, I have no need of you. Everything is for a specific purpose and fits together. We need each other. Okay, and so it's like that within the church as well. There's many different, uh, like uh, within the, the ministry of the church, there's many different things which need to be accomplished, and it uses many different gifts to accomplish that. Which means it uh, to accomplish the vision. Which means it, it, we, that we need many different people to accomplish what God wants us to accomplish. It's the same thing with your business. If you're the only person in your business, and you're doing everything then you're limiting your success, your business's success, you're preventing others from being able to use their gifts and callings in your business and be a blessing to you and what God's got for you. And you will never walk in what God's got for you if you're trying to do it yourself. Okay? Yeah, and this is the first time I've actually seen it like this. But if you look at Ephesians chapter 4 with me, I haven't, I haven't looked at this verse like this before. But... I really got excited when I did see it like this. It says in verse four, uh, chapter 4, verse 11, And Jesus gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So, the fivefold ministry leadership in the church's purpose is to equip you, equip the saints for the work of the ministry Okay, it's to uh, uh, the, the, uh, our, the purpose is to perfect the saints, as the the Bible says here. So, if you are not submitted under church leadership to receive from church leadership, you will never be perfected. I, I, when I had that revelation during preparing for this, it blew me away. Sometimes a road, we will hit a roadblock or we feel like we've hit a ceiling in, in, in moving forward in the purposes that God has for us because in all reality, we haven't humbled ourselves to receive input from others in the body of Christ. We think, I've accomplished this. I've got this qualification. My business is bigger than what you're doing. I don't need you. We're like the, the hand saying to the, 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 the shoulder, I have no need of you. We need each other. And I want to encourage you and challenge you. Humble yourself this year to seek wisdom from, wise, from the wise, from people in the body of Christ, and get input on the way forward. Okay? The answer to your problem might be in the, the person sitting on the other side of the hall or the person in your life group. Hey guys, would you mind praying with me? I've got a big decision to make uh, as to uh, in business. Or going to, 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 um, to someone saying, hey, what do you think about this idea? You know, I, I often sit with, there's a couple of business guys in church who uh, are, are really friends of mine now and uh, I, I really enjoy spending time with them. But you know, when we get together and, and, and have a coffee or lunch or something like that, it, they, they usually also are, are asking for advice and input. I've never run a business running a church, which is similar, but I've never run a business and I don't have the experience that they have in business, but they ask me for input and it's usually good input, I think. <laughs> now they, they, they've confirmed that it, it works, you know, and, and, and it's wise because this, this works for everyone. This works for anyone. There's wisdom in here for your situation. And if you come to me, please don't all come to me, but if you come to me, you know, or go to someone in the church who, who, who's got a relationship with God which is flourishing and they know the word and you ask them for input, they'll be able to give you some input to help you move forward in the purposes that God's got for you. So just uh, uh, to, to, to sum it up, you know, God's got awesome plans for your life 
and wants you to accomplish great things this year. But there are hindrances to you accomplishing what God's got for you. And the hindrances are a lack of vision. You need to have His vision for your life. Neglecting your faith, you need to be active in stirring up your faith and in stepping out in faith and in strengthening your faith. And then insufficient re- ability and resources. You need to be confident of Christ in you. You need to be confident of His ability, the power of the Holy Spirit to perform supernatural things through you, in you. You need to be confident of the giftings which He's placed in you, that they will work because it's your giftings to use. You need to be confident of these things and step out in them in boldness and you'll see great things happen. I'm excited for this year. I believe that uh, uh, if you apply these things, it's going to, you're going to accomplish great things and I believe we're going to have some great testimonies from personal lives, uh, businesses, from families and all sorts of things. I believe that this is a year where we're going to see much transformation, breakthrough in people's lives and great things happening. I also believe for us as a church that we're going to see amazing things, uh, especially in the next few weeks. But, but over this whole year, I think we're going to look back and go, wow, God, you've done so much. And so I want to encourage you, you know, to, to, to really just position yourself to be able to receive. Okay, A good year is a gift, but you've got to receive it. And you know, if you're positioning yourself to receive, then it means that you're humbling yourself before God to be able to receive instruction from Him, to be able to see things the way that He sees them, speak like He speaks, uh, act like He acts and all of that. But it's also humbling yourself to be able to receive input and advice from our brothers and sisters in Christ. And positioning ourselves is being obedient. You know, positioning ourselves in a place to receive is also being obedient to being where God's called us to be, to doing what God's called us to do, so that we can allow those divine opportunities to, to, to happen and those people that God wants in our lives to come across our paths to. Let me pray for you. Father, I want to pray for every single person who's watching this uh, 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 teaching now I thank you that, that the things which we've spoken about and shared that they're going to take them to heart and that uh, these are going to be significant keys for them in moving forward in this year and seeing what you, you know, just, just success this year seeing what you want them to see this year Father thank you that as they seek you they're going to get the vision that you have for them for this year and for their lives Thank you, Father, that you help them just to stir up their faith and step out in faith and grow their faith. Thank you, Father, that you help them to to trust in the ability of God inside of them, the ability of your supernatural power, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Before you go, I want to encourage you, if you need prayer for anything, please uh, stay in chat on our uh, uh, platform on, online here with us. Or if, uh, this is a, if you're watching the recorded version of this, then please feel free to email us, info at gracelife.co. And um, you know, one of the things with ability is, is you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Before that, you need to be born again. So if you're not born again, please contact us, email us, and we'd love to, to share with you how you can be born again and become a child of God. And then uh, if you haven't been baptized in the, in the Holy Spirit and received supernatural ability, you can't operate in supernatural ability. So I want to encourage you to contact us and we'll send you more information and minister to you in that uh, area as well. Have a great week. Uh, next week there are services in Stellenbosch, 9.30 a.m. and 5 p.m. and they will be broadcast live Uh, on the internet as well. Uh, Pray for us in Albania and stay tuned on our website for updates and news and testimonies about what God's doing over here. We love you. Have a great week.